Okay. <laughs> we just got off the Summer Wind. That's the name of the boat. Summer Wind, New York. That was an hour that was grueling. It was tough. The waves, these swells must have been at least, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight feet in height. We were getting slammed everywhere. They were handing out barf bags. People looked purple. In this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know when renting your golf cart in Culebra, Puerto Rico. Okay, so we have arrived here at Carlos Rentals. Now, on the, the, the information we got, they're supposed to have met us at the ferry, but when we got there, they weren't there, so we figured, okay, we looked at it on the map, it was only like a 10, 12 minute walk. So we decided, you know what, instead of sticking around and waiting, we would just walk. Come to find out that once we got here, we found out that the shuttle actually arrives every hour, upon the hour. So we got here kind of in between, so that's the reason why they weren't there. Once we got here, the rental area is pretty big, it's hard to miss. They rent Jeeps, they rent golf carts, they rent regular cars and also kind of off-road vehicles. We booked our golf cart online. It was just under $50, and the total came out for the four days for about $340. The process was simple. We just went in, we told them we had a reservation. They looked it up. They did the process. There's taxes and fees that are mandatory. You might have questions. Some of them is collision. Some of them are liability. You'll see it on the, on the actual bill, but those are mandatory. You have to have those. Once you come out here, they have someone who's going to explain the golf cart. So if you've never driven a golf cart before, they go through the procedures of telling you how to use the golf cart, how to put it in reverse, et cetera, et cetera. As far as gas, whatever you, just like a typical rental, whatever is on the meter, that's what you have to bring back. The gas station is located right across directly across the street from the ferry and you fill it up and bring it back. When you do bring it back, for example, we're departing at six o'clock in the morning. So this place is literally closed at that time while the office is. They leave the gate open and they have a drop box where basically once you drop the golf cart back, you take the key and you put it in the drop box and you walk the 10, 12 minutes back to the ferry and head over to Puerto Rico. When renting the golf cart, they told us upon returning it at 6 a.m., the gates were going to be unlocked and then we can leave the key within the drop box. When we got there at 6 a.m. to return the golf cart, there was no way to access the drop box. So we left the golf cart right in front of the gates. When they did open, we called them and we told them the golf cart was in front of the gate and the keys were on top of the gate and everything was fine. They give you a map. They show you where you can and cannot go. So everything that's in circle, you can go. Flamingo Beach is in circle, which means we can go there. And that's one of the main reasons we came here. Everything else, you can't go. And the reason you can't go there, it's because there's hills. There's a lot of hills and the golf carts just cannot make it up the hills. So they give you all that information and they tell you where, you know, where the vehicle can go. And basically that's it. It's pretty seamless. Of course, the island is not only off limits just for the golf carts. If you wanted to, you could rent a Jeep and you can pretty much go anywhere, pretty much off-road because there are some off-road areas as well. Okay, a quick JBO Pro tip. Now, whenever you get your um, golf cart, just like with any other vehicle, you want to expect it. And what you would want to do is basically use a video to take it around that way because you're liable if the golf cart gets scratched, if it gets dented or anything. So you want to make sure you protect yourself as well. Make sure you go around the golf cart, make sure there are no dings or anything like that. Just a typical thing of when you rent a vehicle in the States or what have you. Another JBO Pro tip is that when we were getting our golf cart, we realized only one headlight works and brake lights didn't. So you want to make sure that all your lights are functioning and everything is good to go as well. As you can see, this one has two lights, they work. This one only has one light that works. And there, as you can see, the brakes is on and both brake lights work. And your license plate, yes. Be sure because a lot of the golf carts are the same color. So if you park your car next to a couple of golf carts with the same color, you might mistake somebody else's golf cart for yours. So know your license plate of your golf cart. The keys are universal, so they can work on any golf cart. So when you put the key in, it would work. It'll, it could start the vehicle, but again, it's not your vehicle. So know your license plate. 
There are two major companies when it comes to car rentals and golf cart rentals. Jerry's Rentals and Carlos Rentals. We actually picked Carlos Rentals for a few reasons. Uh, Carlos Rentals, golf car rentals are $48 per day and Jerry's are $85 per day. When I was reading terms and conditions for rentals at Jerry's Rentals, it said if you're late to pick up your golf cart or Jeep for even one hour, they charge you a fee. Well, at Carlos's, they didn't even have a rental agreement on their website, so we decided to go with them. A JBO Pro tip when it comes to uh, transportation rentals here on Culebra. If you have reservations, you will be able to save. When you come in person without a reservation, you might have to pay 10 to $15 per day more. The reservations do come with pros and cons. One is cheaper. They do have a reserved vehicle for you to, to make sure you actually get one when you get to the island. But if you are taking a ferry and you don't have reserved ferry tickets, you might not even get to the island. So they will still charge you a fee if you miss your reservations. But if you for sure have a flight or already booked ferry tickets, be sure to make reservations in advance to save money and not only that it, during high season they actually do run out of rental vehicles and rental cars as well if you're coming to a Culebra just to experience the world's famous Flamingo Beach be sure to stick around because we have some tips for you on how to save hundreds of dollars when it comes to transportation on Culebra. Okay, let's talk about Jeeps versus golf carts. Well, golf carts have their pros and cons. And so does the Jeeps. Yes, so let's start with the pros of the golf cart. Obviously, it is cheaper, significantly cheaper at Carlos's car rental. It is only $48 per day, plus taxes and fees and blah, 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 and insurance. And uh, the Jeeps start from $100 a day and obviously more as well. And with the golf carts, one of the pros is that parking here is a little bit easier because you can squeeze between two vehicles very easily as opposed to a Jeep, you know, it, it's a little bit bulkier and parking can be a little bit more challenging. Mm -hmm. And the golf cart, you on the island, you want to get that island breeze going through the golf cart and it might be a cool experience riding a golf cart and it is super easy uh, to go around anywhere on the island with a golf cart but you're actually not allowed to go just anywhere uh, with the golf cart first of all at the car rental they told us we cannot go to a certain part of the island they told us no zony beach uh, and if you're planning to go there golf cart will not be a good fit for you also culebra is very hilly and going up those hills or going down those hills can be a little challenging in the golf cart going up or down those hills it is pretty nerve-wracking i always think if we're going to roll down the hill or maybe the brake wouldn't work and we'll just go off the hill and crash well that's um all those thoughts going through my mind also with the golf cart you cannot put kids so if you're coming with a big family especially with kids well more than four yes a golf cart uh, will not be a good fit for you also if you are going to the beach and you're gonna need beach chairs and beach umbrellas and snorkel gear and all that stuff there's nowhere for you to put your stuff there's not a the golf carts don't have a trunk so you can't put your, or leave your personal belongings, certain things you might want to leave behind based on where you're going. You don't really have that option. You have to really take everything with you. Every golf cart comes with a padlock system. So it's like one of these rope type of padlocks. And what you need to do is that you need to lock your golf cart everywhere you go. Basically, if you go to eat at a restaurant, go to a beach, or you're gonna go somewhere that's gonna take a while, you wanna lock your padlock. Now, Culebra is very safe, but 
you may come back from the beach or come back from the restaurant and find your golf cart missing. And the reason being is not because necessarily it's stolen, but these rental golf carts, they all have one master key. And that one key can start any one of the rental golf carts. So the only way to secure your personal golf cart is to lock it <laughs> because every golf cart set of keys have not only the ignition key to start the golf cart, but it comes with three extra keys and those are the padlock keys. So that's how you secure your padlock. And what sometimes happened, they told us, is that sometimes you don't lock your, your golf cart and when, you, when someone else sees the golf cart because they're all the same color roughly, someone will just jump in the golf cart if it's not locked, turn it on and drive away with it. And it could be, they just didn't really remember where they parked and they thought they, it was their golf cart and they just drove away with it. And the license plate would be different and also the lock would be different. So you gotta make sure to lock your golf cart everywhere you go. And you might be wa wondering <laughs> why I'm wearing a jacket. Well, another kind of a golf cart is rain. <laughs> we left at 6 a.m. this morning and it was pouring. It was so a downpour. Half of my body <laughs> is drenched and we are heading to the airport. It is fine if you are during the day coming back from the beach and little rain is okay um, going on the golf cart. But if you do prefer to be safe and secure in a Jeep, especially if you're coming from a hot day maybe you want to put the ac on then a jeep would be a better option for you and if you are planning to explore the entire island and drive all the way to the opposite end also jeep would be a better option for you and of course you can lock up all your personal belongings in your jeep and don't have to worry about it so mm -hmm. in that case a jeep would definitely work best for you but a jeep uh, correct me if i'm wrong will eat up more gas than yes, a golf a Jeep, cart. Yes, the Jeep will eat up more gas, so that's another pro for the golf cart. So let us know in the comments, what would you prefer renting a golf cart or a Jeep when coming to Culebra? Another option would be a UTV, and it actually fits five people. And in the back of the UTV, it's kind of like a crate where you can put your beach chairs, umbrellas. And nothing will fall out and you don't have right. to strap it down. There are two gas stations on the island. One is right next to the ferry and the other one is called Total Energies. And it is right across the bridge just about three minute drive from the ferry. Well, the one is right next to the ferry closes early. It is only 5.41 p.m. and it was already closed. They charge over $10 per gallon. Here at the Total Energies, the gas station is open till 7 p.m. and they charge, well, looks like they charge per liter, $1 per liter. So it will be just uh, a little bit over four dollars per gallon something to keep in mind when you do return your vehicle early we are actually returning it at 6 a.m and the car rental place will be still closed so we decided to get gas the night before this way when we return we don't have to pay extra at the car rental place they charge five dollars for one eighth of, of a tank there is no at golf car rentals there is no like a regular car meter when there is it tells you how much money how much gas it is in the tank it is a little bit different system so here it's better to get your own gas okay when you pump your gas you actually need to give your id first and then start filling your tank and then you pay at the end it's starting a good tip is when you get your car, take a photo of how much gas you actually had in the tank. And this way you can actually remember exactly how much gas you need to put in. Okay, so one thing you need to know is that whenever you are paying by credit card, because they do accept credit cards, is that it has to be a minimum of $5. We pumped gas and it was just under three dollars like 280 something and i had to pay cash they don't accept credit cards under five it's there's a minimum so um which is really not bad because considering we've had the vehicle for four days and we've been to tambarindo beach we've been to malones beach and we've been to flamingo beach twice 
as well as driving around the city getting food and and stuff like that so not bad three dollars for four days so just to give you an approximation of what maybe you'll pay roughly if you kind of did the same thing because obviously the big attraction here is flamingo beach so we went there twice and to clarify it's not to fill the tank we didn't fill the tank and that's what it cost we actually added just the amount that we put back in based upon when we rented it when we rented it we took a photo of the of the gas tank it had x amount of gas in it and that's what we refilled so it was kind of like this much more gas so it's not a full tank but we are returning it with the amount of gas that's supposed to be in it when you return it something to keep in mind also especially after you finished uh, renting your golf cart or your Jeep or whatever you may have rented is that the parking situation here there's parking pretty much everywhere but what you need to keep in mind is that you can actually get a ticket the gentleman behind me that you see in the blue shirt that is the police and of course he's standing here because this is a very busy area with taxis pulling in and out and people trying to park and all the restaurants so what you need to keep in mind if you're not sure where to park if the line is yellow sometimes you can't park there but if you see a lot of vehicles parked on one side of the road then common sense will tell you okay it's safe to park on that side don't be the only vehicle to be parked on the opposite side because then you're asking for a ticket but for the most part you'll be able to find parking especially if you're using a golf cart which is really small you could fit between two vehicles easily so just something to keep in mind is the parking here not a big deal that concludes our rental guide here on Culebra. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.